Hey guys, it's Joe with PocketNow.com. Most of you know that my favorite custom ROM is Cyanogen Mod ROM. They've been working for quite a while on CM9, which is the ice cream sandwich version of their ROM. It's almost done, and I'd like to show you what they've got in it. Let's go take a look. So this is my GSM Galaxy Nexus. I'm running one of the early June nightlies on it. This is the lock screen, and you can tell up here at the top I've got my basic information, the date and time. I'm also running kind of low on battery down here, so it wants me to connect my charger. I've got a weather widget installed, and that weather widget lets me, well, see what the weather's going to be like. Some people have complained that the, uh, the weather provider that Cyanogen Mod is using right now doesn't have enough coverage, especially for their area, but it's a start. I've also got the calendar widget loaded up, and I'll show you where you can do that too. It's showing me my next appointment. And then down at the bottom is my ring unlocker, which lets me drag this either to unlock or to quick launch one of the applications that I've pre-configured. Let's go ahead and unlock. Now this takes me to my face unlock, and there's the camera. It's not gonna open that up, so we'll come over here and unlock this. And there's my home screen, just like you would expect. Now there are some things that you'll notice here that are different. First of all, these, uh, this text at the top, it's green. It's not blue like ice cream sandwiches. That's because we finally have support for themes with Cyanogen Mod 9. Next, you'll notice down at the bottom, I've got this nice little uh, search button. It's back, again, thanks to Cyanogen Mod 9. As we scroll across, you'll notice, see that nice little animation there. It's not just going side to side, it's kind of rotating in. That also is part of Cyanogen Mod, but more particularly it's part of the Trebuchet Launcher, which we showed you earlier. We'll have a link at the end of the video if you want to go back and see our thoughts on Trebuchet and what it can do. We've got the same tilt up there, but now you can see it's got a nice green hint to it instead of blue. Again, Cyanogen Mod. So let's dig right into the settings. The first thing you're going to notice just by pulling down the shade here is I've got all of these toggles at the top. Some ROMs include that, and when I say some ROMs, I mean usually that's third-party stuff. Uh, you'll see that on especially HTC and Samsung devices. Stock doesn't usually have this stuff up at the top, but I can quickly turn my Wi-Fi on or off, Bluetooth on or off, etc., and I can customize these. How do we do that? We go into settings. So up here at the settings, everything looks pretty much the same until we get down in here to interface. Now, launcher we showed you again in the trebuchet video. I'll have a link to that at the end of this video so you can go back and check that out. We won't talk too much about it here. Let's look at the lock screen settings. Here we can change our screen security, the owner info, and you saw kind of up at the top of that uh, my owner info scrolling across. Weather, calendar, and slider shortcut. So let's look at each one of those really quickly. Screen security, I'm using Face unlock, I can improve face matching. Now this, if you notice, looks pretty much like you're used to with your uh, traditional typical screen security. And it is, except for this show widgets before unlock. That's kind of added in. Owner information is a good place where you can go in and put in your owner information. I like to put an email address and even an in case of emergency contact in there. Weather, you can see it's enabled. I can choose to display weather, and again, this is using Yahoo Weather. There is no option to change it to AccuWeather or uh, Google Weather or whatnot, at least not yet. How often do you want it to update? I've got it set to update every hour. I can use a custom location just in case geolocation doesn't work, or if I want to you know, force it someplace else other than where I am now. You can use metric, show location, show timestamp, invert the high and low temperatures, all that fun stuff. And it's right there on your lock screen, so you don't have to launch into the device to be able to get to it. Calendar, if you want to be able to show your next event, you can choose what calendars you want to display. You will want to check that because I believe it comes default to no calendars, so you won't see anything at all, even if that's turned on, unless you go in and select some calendars. It's only going to look ahead one day. You can select that to look ahead you know, three days or a week or just a few hours if you want. It can show uh, events with reminders only, the location, or the description, or any combination of those. Really kind of cool. Again, right there, as soon as you pull out your phone and turn it on, you don't even have to unlock it. You know everything you need to about your upcoming day. And then slider shortcuts. 
Now, this is the nice little ring unlock. And the way this works is kind of cool. You can, for example, we'll reset that back to default. And now you'll notice I have nothing except lock and camera. So what I like to do is, let's come over here and do that. And we can change this based on any of these. This is just setting the, uh, the icon. Go ahead and cancel out of that. Let's set another one. I use Waze a lot. So let's go ahead and change this over here to Waze. And I accidentally tapped on the screen. Sorry about that. Again, we'll go back in here. Right now it's empty. We'll choose Applications. That's going to bring up our app list. It does take a little bit of time. There is some lag here. A lot of lag here. There we go. And we scroll all the way down to W's, which is where Waze is. We choose that. I like the icon. If you don't like the icon, you can tap on the icon side, just like that. I'm going to say OK. And now, there you go. I've got a Waze shortcut. You can keep adding stuff. Hit save down there to save it, and you're good to go. So the next time, I'm going to have these three icons, lock, camera, and Waze. Very cool. Move back in here. Let's look at themes. Now, themes we know about from Cyan Engine Mod 7. This is essentially the same theme engine, and you can go out to the market, uh, the Play Store, and grab anything that's a, a CM9 theme. Search for that, and you're pretty good. Now, anything that you find in there is probably going to work just fine. I've got these holo themes, which work really well. I like green. It's very close to the Androidian theme that we had before. You've got an orange, a purple, a red, and then the stock one, which is your regular blue. To apply it, all you got to do is hit apply, switches that over to the selected theme, and there you go. Now everything is in that theme. It's more a, a color set than anything, but there are some other things that you can do with it, and we're going to see more coming. So just very basic, but very cool, and finally included in the latest nightlies. If we look at system, we can come in here and change the status bar. We can show the clock or not show the clock. We can change the battery style to an icon, or what I had it at was just a percentage. You can even hide it. You can change your signal status. I've got an icon. You can change it to text, which, again, this is still a work in progress, so occasionally you're going to notice some stuff like that. And I've been using this phone for ridiculously long. Now you can see my signal strength as well as a little icon in there as well. So really kind of cool. And then, of course, you can hide it if you don't care about what that signal strength is. And then brightness control, allow adjusting the brightness by sliding across the status bar. Let's go ahead and leave that on and uh, see what we uh, can do. Wherever, where is the status bar? It's up at the top. I still haven't figured out how to get that one to work. Guys, help me out here. Leave me some comments, okay? Tell me how to use that because I didn't see any difference there. Anyway, let's get back in here. Notification drawer. Now, this is that thing right there. Some of us call it the notification shade. You can show the power widget, the uh, hide on change, yada yada yada. So all of this stuff, the power widget is that thing up at the top. It's not about power per se, it's about, you know, it's a widget that's powerful. So now I've got all of my stuff up there. I can show it. I can hide on change. So if I toggle something, let's turn Bluetooth off, it closes the drawer. If I want to hide the indicator, I can do that. Okay. If I want to hide the scroll bar, if I've got so many of these that there's a scroll bar, I can hide that scroll bar if I want. I like not having a scroll bar, so I don't really care about that. Enable haptic feedback. If you want to feel something when you press on it, you can either let it use the global settings or turn it on all the time or off all the time. I've got mine set on because I like that tactile feedback. Widget buttons. These are the buttons that you can choose to put in there. It's still no uh, LED flashlight yet. They have a placeholder for it, but it's still kind of a work in progress. And then a bunch of other stuff that you can add or remove. It's up to you. Ironically, I can toggle WiMAX. My phone doesn't have WiMAX, so maybe that's something they want to consider uh, only putting into specific ROMs. But anyway, brightness modes, network modes, screen timeout modes, lots of modes. Cool stuff that you can do. Uh, and then, of course, the flash mode. You can either choose high or death ray. 
this is grayed out right now, but you know, it's cool that we have a death ray built into CM9. It just means a really bright flash. Okay, so that's about it. We can change the order of the buttons very simply just by, you know, moving it up and down, grabbing onto it just like that. I like it in that order, so I'm going to leave it there. Let's go back here. We've talked just about everything on this, I believe, except the navigation bar. So we'll go ahead and do that uh, in just a second here. Wallpaper, that's just another place that you can get a wallpaper. And CM9 does come with some new wallpapers and some of the ones that you're accustomed to with previous builds can change the font size to small all the way up to huge. I've got mine set at normal. And then the navigation bar, that's this guy down at the bottom. Go ahead and open that. And right now it's locked. I can unlock that and then make changes. Now you'll notice I've got some stuff on either side that I can do. So really kind of cool. I can come in here and make some changes. Let's revert back to default so you can see. So I've got the three buttons. So that's great. Now I've unlocked it. I can now add something. Let's add the search button. And just like that, we've now added a search button to our status bar. So really, really cool. Let's keep going back and see what else we have in here. We have advanced. Inside advanced, we have this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change this quite a bit. So if you saw that, I just changed the whole color scheme here um, to default. Now, let me show you why I did that. This is what you're going to get right out of the box. Not only out of the box with the Cyanogen Mod ROM, but also out of the box with your own ROM. So let's go into our color multipliers tuning and everything's set to one. Let's do this CM setting. Just tap that. It kind of scales things back. Okay, let's do the color gamma tuning and let's do CM settings and it kind of scale things around. Now you'll notice my blacks are a lot deeper. My blues are a lot crisper. There's a lot higher contrast. It just looks tons nicer and I love doing that. And all you got to do is open both of these and hit the CM setting on both and you're done. Just, it's beautiful. Go ahead and do that. You will thank me for, for that one tip alone. In general, we have something interesting. This was new in the, uh, the latest June nightlies. We've always had this little CPU setting up at the top with nothing underneath it. And this vibrator feedback during tuning doesn't have much to do with the CPU, but that's all we have in there. We do have this CPU settings elsewhere though, so let me show you that. Profiles are new. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Uh, and then I'll have an upcoming video as soon as I can get some, uh, some extra stuff coming in. It's really, really quite awesome. Uh, anyway, so down here under performance, we'll open that up. Yes, we know that we need to proceed with caution. We can come in and change our CPU governor. Let's use that, change it to interactive. And that's just how quickly does your CPU scale up and down in speed. We can set the minimum CPU frequency. We can set the maximum CPU frequency, overclock it a little bit, and then we can restore these settings on boot. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that for now. Memory management, I've tweaked this a little bit to allow purging of assets. That essentially lets you free up some RAM. You do have to reboot after making a change to that, but generally speaking, the device runs a little bit snappier when you do that. And then this kernel same page merging, the uh, KSM, it says, quote, reduces physical memory requirements and improves performance. Well, okay, tap that, turn it on. That's great. Surface dithering, I leave that alone. I like the, the, the textures the way that they are. If I want more speed, I can turn on 16-bit transparency, but that loses some, uh, some graphics quality and causes some weird graphic artifacts sometimes. So I just leave those turned the way they are. Come back here, and you know what? That's, that's about it. So the one last thing that I wanted to show you in CyanogenMod is profiles. Now you can get to profiles either by going to settings and profiles or by pressing and holding the power button. Let me unlock again. So we press and hold the power button and now you can see profile and I can toggle it right there. We don't want to do that so let me just show you. Profiles are really, really powerful things that you can do to turn things on and off. So for example, this is my default profile. At night, well, let's go to work, okay? Should we see what I've got set up for work? At work, I still want my mobile data enabled. I want my Bluetooth disabled because I'm not in my car. I don't need it turned on. My GPS, I don't need either. 
My Wi-Fi, I don't need either, so I've got both of those turned off. Data synchronization is on, and my portable Wi-Fi hotspot is on because I've got a tablet that I use at work, so I turn that on, again, while I'm at work. This is the June 5th CyanogenMod Mod Nightly for the Maguru, the Galaxy Nexus GSM version. So, very, very cool. There you go, that's an overview, kind of in depth, a uh, little bit of detail, some settings that you may not have known were in there or might not have known what they did, and a couple things that I still don't know what they do. So again, if you can add feedback to this and help us know what some of those things that we briefed over are, go ahead and leave those in the comments over at pocketnow.com. If you like seeing custom ROMs and all you can do with them, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up. For Pocket Now, showing off CyanogenMod ROM, I'm Joe Levi.